your phone just vibrated with another notification. You unlock it, the screen lights up instantly, and somewhere deep inside that device, a chip smaller than your fingernail just executed billions of calculations in a fraction of a second. Ever wonder who actually builds those tiny silicon brains that run literally everything in your life? Today, I'll explain who makes the chips like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand how the chip manufacturing process works, why one company controls half of all advanced chips on Earth, and whether owning your own chip factory makes you unstoppable or just burns billions of dollars. Most people think chips just appear inside your laptop or car or refrigerator. But here's what actually happens. Companies like Apple, Nvidia, and Qualcomm design chips. They draw up the blueprints. They decide what the chip should do, how fast it should run, what features it needs. But here's the twist. They don't actually make them. They're architects without construction crews. They design the most sophisticated technology on the planet, then hand those designs to someone else to build. And that someone else is almost always the same company, TSMC. TSMC stands for Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. If you've never heard of them, that's exactly how they like it. They don't sell anything directly to you. They don't have flashy ads or celebrity endorsements, but TSMC manufactures the chips inside your iPhone, the chips inside your PlayStation, the chips that power ChatGPT's servers. The chips in your car's computer systems. They make over half of all the world's advanced chips. Not phones. Not computers. Just the microscopic silicon that makes those things possible. Here's why this matters to you. Building chips isn't like baking cookies in your kitchen. It's one of the most expensive, complicated things humans have ever figured out how to do at scale. A single advanced chip factory, called a fab, costs 10 to 20 billion dollars to build. Not upgrade, just to build one. And that's before you hire thousands of engineers, install machines that cost over a hundred million dollars each, and create rooms 10,000 times cleaner than a hospital operating room. One speck of dust can ruin an entire batch worth millions. So companies like Apple looked at that price tag and said, no thanks. Instead, they focus on design. They spend billions figuring out what the chip should do, then outsource manufacturing to specialists like TSMC. This is called the fabless model. You stay fabless. You skip the factories. You let someone else deal with multi-billion dollar construction projects and constant technology upgrades. For decades, this system worked beautifully. Designers design. Manufacturers manufacture. Everyone stays in their lane. But now, that system is cracking. And the cracks are coming from someone you wouldn't expect, Elon Musk. Tesla isn't a chip company. They make electric cars and batteries and solar panels. But Musk recently said something that made the entire semiconductor industry sit up straight. He said Tesla might need to produce 100 to 200 billion AI chips per year. Not buy them. Produce them. That's not a typo. That's more chips annually than some countries use in a decade. Why? Because Tesla isn't just building cars anymore. They're building Optimus, a humanoid robot they want to mass produce by the millions. They're building self-driving systems that require massive computing power in every vehicle. And they're building data centers to train the AI that powers all of it. Here's where it gets wild. Musk looked at companies like TSMC and Samsung, the biggest chip manufacturers on Earth, and said, they're too slow. Not bad. Not incompetent, just not fast enough for his timeline. He wants to move at Tesla speed, which is basically sprinting while everyone else walks. So Tesla is now considering building its own massive chip fab, in-house, fully controlled. No waiting in line behind Apple or Nvidia for manufacturing capacity. This would be one of the most aggressive moves in modern tech history. Now check this out. TSMC didn't become the king of chip making by accident. They did it by focusing on one thing, manufacturing. They don't design chips. They don't compete with their customers. They just build what you ask for, faster and smaller and better than anyone else on the planet. While Intel tried to design and manufacture, TSMC went all in on being the world's best contractor. They mastered what's called process nodes, basically how small they can make the transistors on a chip. Right now, TSMC is producing three nanometer chips. That's three billionths of a meter. You could fit thousands of those transistors across the width of a single human hair. This matters because every app that loads faster, every photo that looks sharper, every AI assistant that responds quicker depends on chips getting smaller and more powerful. TSMC makes those improvements possible. Without them, the entire pace of technological progress slows down. Your phone upgrades become boring. 
your apps stop getting better. Innovation stalls. TSMC isn't just important, they're irreplaceable. But here's the problem. TSMC is located in Taiwan, and Taiwan sits 90 miles off the coast of China, in one of the most tense regions on the planet. If anything disrupts TSMC's operations, whether it's a natural disaster, a cyber attack, or something worse, the entire global tech industry shuts down within weeks. No new iPhones, no new graphics cards, no new data center hardware. The supply chain doesn't just wobble, it collapses. Governments around the world are now scrambling to build backup chip fabs in America, Europe, Japan, anywhere that reduces dependence on one island. And this is exactly why Tesla's move is so strategic. If you're planning to build millions of robots, you can't afford to be at someone else's mercy. You can't wait six months for TSMC to find room in their fabrication lineup. You need control. You need speed. You need to guarantee supply no matter what's happening in global markets or geopolitics. Owning your own fab means you're no longer just a customer. You're the manufacturer. That's the difference between renting and owning. It costs more up front, but it gives you power nobody can take away. Google, Amazon, Microsoft are all designing their own custom AI chips now too, but they still outsource manufacturing to TSMC or Samsung. Tesla is signaling they might go further. Build the fab, hire the engineers, control the whole stack from design to silicon. If they pull this off, it changes the entire playbook. Suddenly, owning the manufacturing process isn't just for specialists. It's for anyone with deep enough pockets and big enough ambitions. Here's what you need to understand. The companies that control chip manufacturing control the future. Not just technology, everything. Healthcare, transportation, communication, defense, energy, all run on chips. And right now, that control is concentrated in Taiwan, South Korea, and a handful of fabs in other countries. If Tesla actually builds a large-scale chip factory, they're not just securing supply. They're becoming a new power player in the most important manufacturing industry on Earth. That affects what products you get, how fast they improve, and who decides the pace of innovation in your life. So here's the recap. Most chips are designed by companies like Apple and Nvidia, but manufactured by TSMC in Taiwan. TSMC dominates because they focused purely on manufacturing, spending billions to master the smallest, fastest production process on the planet. Building a fab costs 10 to 20 billion dollars and requires insane precision. Tesla now says they might need 100 to 200 billion AI chips per year for robots and self-driving cars. Musk thinks external foundries are too slow, so Tesla is considering building their own fab to control the entire supply chain. If they do, it's one of the boldest moves in tech history. And it signals that owning chip manufacturing might be the next battleground for companies that want to lead in AI and robotics. But here's what I want to know. If Tesla spends $20 billion building their own chip factory and it works, does every tech giant follow them and destroy the entire fabless model? Or does Tesla just become the cautionary tale of what happens when you think you're smarter than TSMC?